we all know that that debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump was a joke. Um, you know, the black community has been very disgruntled with the situation that's going on with Joe Biden since, since his presidency when he defeated um, Trump, you know, in the election. Uh, there's been a lot, a whole lot of immigrants coming into the country in all different cities all across America. And the black community feels like the Democratic Party has turned their back on our issues. We've been arguing reparations. You have the old school uh, Democrats that staunchly support the Democratic Party, but you have a new generation of younger people that's looking at the broken promises that's come from Democrats. And they're saying, listen, we ain't riding with that. We, we don't we don't really rock with Trump the way uh, uh, like that either, but we're going to we, we, we're going to give our vote to the people that f that meet our needs. The Democrats tries to keep a lot of black people in fear. We have to save democracy. You got to vote Democrat. The Republicans are coming to take away democracy and they lead with a whole bunch of fear. But in this debate, Donald Trump really got at Joe Biden, Joe Biden about uh, his policies and how um, he's been very discriminatory against uh, the black community and the black community has given him their vote and he's been you know he's been horrible towards uh uh the black community in america let's look at some of the um the situations from the debate and we'll come right back the effects of extreme heat intensifying wildfires stronger hurricanes and rising sea levels former president trump you've vowed to end your opponent's climate initiatives but will you take any action as president to slow the climate crisis well, let me just go back to what he said about the police how close the police are there. Almost every police group in the nation from every state is supporting Donald J. Trump. Almost every police group. And what he's done to the black population is horrible, including the fact that for 10 years he called them super predators. We can't, in the 1990s, we can't forget that. Super predators was his name. And he called it to them, for 10, and they've taken great offense at it, and now they see it happening. But when they see what I did for criminal justice reform and for the historically black uh, colleges and universities where I funded them and got them all funded and the uh, opportunity zones with with Tim as you know Tim Scott was incredible he did a great job great senator from South Carolina he came to me with the idea and it was a great idea it's one of the most successful economic development acts ever in the country opportunity zones and the biggest beneficiary are blacks and that's why we have the best numbers with them in Maybe ever. They're saying ever. I read this morning where ever the best numbers. He's lost much of the black population because he's done a horrible job for black people. He's also done a horrible job for Hispanics. But when you see these millions of people pouring into our country and they're going to take the jobs and it's already started and you haven't seen anything yet. It's a disaster. So Donald Trump really embarrassed Joe Biden on his record since he's been president with the black community. But and looking at Joe Biden, Joe Biden looks like he's suffering from early stages of the uh, not early stages, stages of dementia. And the Democratic Party is in a big panic. They are, man, they are panicking big time. And there was a lot of debates on whether he should step down. What should the Democratic Party do? They're, they're looking up um, new. They're looking for new candidates. But they were saying this after the debate. Joy Reid was in full panic mode. And she said this. That said, um, I, too, was on the phone throughout much of the debate um, with um, Obama world people, with Democrats, um, with people who are political operatives, with campaign operatives. My phone really never stopped uh, buzzing throughout. And the um, universal reaction was somewhere approaching panic. Hmm. Um, the people who were texting with me were um, very concerned um, about... Uh, President Biden seeming extremely feeble, seeming extremely weak. And, you know, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier. President Biden had one job tonight and it was it, it one primary job. And yes, it was to litigate Donald Trump's, you know, criminality and, and all of those things. But he had to settle his own party. Mm -hmm. He needed to settle Democrats. Democrats, you know, they always talk about Democrats are bedwetters and Democrats are always panicking. Yes, Democrats are always panicking. They're always scared, you, right? They're always thinking they're going to lose. Like Democrats are, are very pessimistic. They're, they, this is just neurotic. who they are. They're neurotic. But Joe Biden's job was to reassure them tonight. 
His job was to calm his party, to make them feel that, yes, I can do this. I have four more years in me. I have the ability uh, and the stamina and the strength to do four more years. He did not do that. He did the opposite of that. He made them more panicked. Mm -hmm. The people who were texting me were even more panicked. They actually expected it to be better than it was. And now they're in a, I I won't say a full-fledged panic, but it's getting. So you see them in full panic mode. But then you even have the the ultimate crybaby they always putting on TV, Van Jones. Oh my God, I I I this this guy, man, he does this. I just want to speak from my heart. Um, I love that guy. That's a good man. He loves his country. Uh, he's doing the best that he can. Uh, but he had a test to meet tonight uh, to restore confidence uh, uh, of, of the country and of the base, and he failed to do that. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, We're still far from our convention, and there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. Um, But that was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden, and it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic, it's pain uh, for what we saw tonight. The funny thing is, they blame like a lot of this stuff on black men. And, you know, you got all kinds of people saying that the right wingers are coming in now and they're using um, podcasters and different people to influence uh, black voters to basically not vote Democrat. So there was an article that came out uh, where it says right wing uh, white right wingers are spreading misinformation to black voters through podcasts and influencers. So a man, uh, Jahan Jones, uh, he wrote he wrote. Um, over, over the past decade, over the past few years, on readout, on readout blog, I've written extensively about how popular uh, uh, obstinately black uh, news outlets, influencers, and hip hop podcasters have been used to spread far right propaganda and misinformation to undermine civil engagement. This report is easily the most thorough examination uh, uh, I've seen into how false and manipulative claims make their way. From uh, bad actors to black to black folks, I mean it's 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 just I clicked on it so fast I almost hammered a hole in my desk. The report analysis uh, from the organization Onic Impacts uh, can be found. So again, they're using you know they're using this stuff to say that um, these podcasters are spreading misinformation and they're using people like Joe Buttons and uh, 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 Nineteen Keys and Stephen A. Smith. I mean, it's just getting it's just getting crazy. It says the report notes that some of these outlets uh, have large audiences, could make them very useful in dispelling false and misleading claims. But it also highlights how some of these uh, uh, entities have already platformed extremist right uh, right wingers. It all it also talks about some concepts we've discussed here uh, on the blogs, including efforts to. Man, listen, basically talk about the anti-immigrant uh, sentiment within the black community, uh, a Trumponian strategy uh, we see it unfold today, and efforts to promote toxic, let's say, here we go, here, here, here we go again, hyper-masculinity amongst black men. And it, and it talks about how uh, artificial intelligence tools will likely uh, exacerbate the spread of targeted disinformation without measures to combat it. So again... Listen, the Democratic Party has 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 not lived up to the things that that our support has given them over the years, and they're paying the price for it. And you have a whole new generation of Black people that's speaking and standing up, that's saying something. So what they're doing is now to to disagree with them would be toxic masculinity. And um, um, if you live in Chicago, Philadelphia, New York City, and different places, you can see the immigrant crisis. So that's not something that's being made up. Now, do a lot of us pledge our allegiance to the Republican Party? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What we should be is pledging our allegiance to each other, and whichever party meet our demands is the people that will get our vote. But to sit here, but what they're doing is they're running interference because they've been used to us just giving ourselves over to that party with no um, and, and expecting nothing back. So they're going to use their media and their platforms to try to say, well, black men, black men are being duped as if we're stupid. We're being duped by the Republican Party to just give ourselves over to them. But Stephen A. Smith, 
has something to say about this. And he spoke on the, uh, the Democratic Party and how they actually let Joe Biden and his family down by allowing this to happen. Check this out. If you're the Democratic Party, you're going to have some people out there saying it was just one night and it was just one debate. Nah. What if Trump says, I don't need to debate again? And all we have to hold on to is what we witnessed last night. A brain fart within three minutes. Mumbling often enough where Donald Trump ended up saying, I don't understand what he said with that last sentence. I don't think he understands what he said. Where the nation is looking at it and you have pundits on both sides of the aisle looking sad and despondent. In Van Jones' case for CNN, he looked like he was about to cry. Other pundits were saying, where are the family members? How could you put your dad out there like that? How could you put your husband out there like that? If you're the Democratic Party, how could you put one of your colleagues and your contemporaries out there like that? What the hell is going on? What's going on? He's not what he used to be. Ain't Kamala Harris qualified? Westmore, governor of Maryland. What about him? Gavin Newsom, you're going to still keep saying, you ain't running, you ain't running, you ain't running. Nobody's going to go to Biden and say, we love you. We appreciate what you've done for this country. Your years of service. But please, it's time for you to step aside. We just going to let him go out there like that. We just gonna let we just gonna leave him out hanging like that. You know how desperate that makes you look as a Democratic Party. I will say to the black community in 2024, you have a choice, and you make your vote matter. Our ancestors did not march in Selma, and Atlanta, uh, uh, Mississippi. You know all these different places: Florida, Arkansas, North Carolina, South Carolina. They didn't march Texas and all these different places in the South getting dogs sicked on them and water hoses sicked on them just for us to vote just for Democrat because they signed the Civil Rights Bill. We have to vote for a reason. We have to vote for something that's beneficial to us. When you see them marching, they was fighting for something that was beneficial to our growth and development and our life. So you have to make it count. Your vote have to count for something. You just can't give your vote to Democrat just because. You have to study what Trump policies are. You have to study what Joe Biden's policies are. And then you have to have an agenda for, your, for our people. And we have to fight to get that agenda met for our people. Other groups fight for their people. The Latino communities fight for their people. The Arab community, the Jewish community, they fight for their people. And there's nothing wrong with that. We've been told that we got to share everything with everybody and we don't have a right to fight for our people because our dysfunction is profitable for everybody else. Well, those days are coming to an end. We have to fight. We have to get things specifically for black American people, FBA people, specifically for us. And if they're not willing to do that, then they don't get our vote. Because you already see that they're trying to replace us. And Trump alluded to that and coming after Biden. But I don't trust Trump either because I'm looking at Trump and what he's trying to do uh, uh, with the federal court benches. Well, we're supposed to have federal law on the books to protect us. And he's putting in a more conservative uh, uh, judges on those benches that want to give more power back to the states. Where our argument is against the state for not enf uh, uh, enforcing the federal laws that's on the books to protect black folks. But most of our people don't understand this. We don't understand the executive orders that's on the books. So I'm looking at Trump's side eye as well. As well. But the problem is the Democratic Party never enforced the executive orders on the books that's, that's supposed to be specifically for black Americans. How about that, uh, uh, Democrat Party? So we have to get more cerebral in our approach and understand how things work. And y'all know I've been talking to my hardcore watchers know I've been talking about this for years. What's the black agenda? Because we have things on the federal on the federal books that our grandparents fought for to protect us. But state law never enforced it. So we had the, we not we failed to make the Democratic Party make the federal government enforce those laws. But I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut it short here. 
Uh, remember, Donald Trump ain't trying to enforce them either. So don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. I'm going to cut this video short here. Leave your comments in the comment section, man. If you made it this far in the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to Street Media TV. And remember, I love y'all. Till the next time. Peace.